Hey guys, on here. Last night I saw Black Adam, and I want to give you guys my thoughts on the film. Now, I know the critics have already kind of stated their piece, and I get where they're coming from. I do, because I everything, all the complaints that I've seen from the critics that gave it poor scores and poor reviews and all that, I get it. I do. I, I even see it when I was watching the film. I, this is a, in a lot of ways, and hear me out, this has way more problems on a technical level than I would even say Morbius had. The thing, though, that I think this movie does that helps save it from that, uh, that, 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 that reputation, at least, is that I did find it cartoonishly enjoyable, both in the way that it feels like a 2000s superhero film mixed with, like, a, a, a little bit of a more hollowed out but also expanded or extended DC animated flick. The biggest problems with this movie structurally is, or technically rather, is the editing, the pacing, and the script. This script needed help, man. This, most people, no one talks like a real person. And I feel like that's been a very common complaint that I've had in uh, the past couple of reviews that I've done. But nobody talks like a real person. Most people only talk in like exposition or trailer lines. Like all the lines you hear from the trailer about what it means to be a hero, if he's a hero, if he's a villain, or what is he, or what are these lines that we draw, that's the only conversation anyone ever has other than the things that is just constantly expositing all the different setups and things that are happening throughout the film. But when that's not happening, when no one's talking, this movie is like 75% action and it's pretty decent for the most part. Ridiculous, not all the CGI works when it's there, but like for the most part, it'll keep you entertained. This movie is basically, ooh, shiny red ball, the, almost the entire runtime. And that's one of the major saves, I think, for this movie in the long run is that Anytime you're like getting bogged down with the exposition or you're getting bogged down with this, like these just horrifically written dialogues between people, uh, it, it turns on an action scene and you're like, oh, hey, there it is. And bing, bang, boom, you're out of it. And like, that's the one of the things I kind of appreciated about the film at least. And I love the way that they depicted Black Adam's powers and the way that they power scaled, because it very much feels, and I'll say this is, I know this is gonna, some people are not gonna understand this one way or the other, and people are gonna be upset no matter what, but like, there's a lot of this that does feel like they are homaging Zack Snyder's style in a lot of the action. There's a lot of 300-esque uh, slow-mo shots, there is a lot of slowdown, there is a lot, There even in the flashback sequences evokes visually and even with the color tone, uh, Zack Snyder's 300 stuff. Um, the thing though about that, while I do appreciate it and it's not unusual to this world because it's kind of how things have been framed, a lot of the time it feels really hammy because it's not done with Zack Snyder's skill or his ep uh, aptitude. The same can actually be said for some of the, you know, Zack Snyder's kind of got this reputation for these needle drops, especially and controversially, even in the Snyder Cut itself, when like he, we have these little slow motion moments where it kind of becomes a little bit of a music video. We kind of get some moments like that in this, and I'll tell you, every one of these songs, every one of these needle drops, man, does it feel out of left field and out of place. Some of these needle drops is like just oil and water, man. It just does not fit or match the tone or the vibe or anything. It just feels like somebody be like, oh, this these are things Snyder does. Let's just th slap it in here. Other times it works, like the slow-mo, especially when Black Adam like slows down time and you see him like reacting into all these things around him in the time that he's moving. The, vis the way they visualize his super speed, his invulnerability, his lightning, all that does evoke some of the better parts of Man of Steel though without a little bit of the polish of some of those action sequences that kind of really grounded the action in Man of Steel. Um, it, it just kind of shows that I've, I think the, the problem with a lot of the movie, if any, is the director. Like the director, the writer, 
whatever. That's that's my guess because a lot of this was like there's a lot of great ideas bounced around in this, but nobody with the I I feel like the reins to kind of contain it from keeping fr- keeping it from going off the rails or becoming campy or goofy. But at the same time, sometimes that camp works. There's some things in this movie that are going to be straight memed. There are some scenes in this that are just straight goofy. But there's some scenes in this that are just straight up badass. As much as the trailer talks about him not being good or evil or whatever, being this gray, dude mercs so many people in this film. I think on screen, body count wise for the DCEU, I think this is up there. You know, I'm not counting the destruction of Metropolis in the aftermath of Superman versus Zod, but like physically you see him killing people. Bad people, but killing them. Um, and it's fun. It's wild. And I, it shows me a little bit too that like this movie is violent in a very PG-13 way where it feels more violent than it is which is something that makes me like reflect on like some of the stuff that Sony's done with their their like Venom and Carnage films and I'm just like man you guys could have pushed this probably a little bit harder. <laughs> but this movie is it, it never really escapes that that camp territory. It also kind of feels like it's two movies in one. It both wants to be a JSA film while at the same time being a Black Adam origin story where I felt like it should have just committed to one or the other. Like a, there's a lot of focus and attempts to build out these four members of the JSA with the, the getting forcing in their backstories that they've been here for a long time, apparently, which is also a big old head scratcher given what we know about this universe and makes me question about what universe we're in right now. A lot of that kind of dist- distracts and it feels like forced as hell when we're trying to get to know these characters. Like, I'll be honest, like, I feel like I love the JSA and their incorporation in this. But like some of that time could have been better placed on fleshing out Black Adam and what's going on in conduct and fleshing out the villain because the villain's not fleshed out whatsoever. Very one note, one dimensional, like copy and paste villain story. In the meantime, like I feel like we could have just put the JSA in here as a plot device and need no introduction. Just trust us to know they exist. We didn't need any characterization. Just let them be, be the who they are in the scenes themselves and just let that play out. Because once they hit the scene and they're facing off and the action kicks in, it's awesome, man. I really dug it. It was a lot of fun seeing the JSA and Black Adam in action. The ending of this movie does result in a giant CGI monster fest with a whole bunch of stuff going on. And uh, it's like a CGI army, a sky beam, and uh, a fight with a CGI enemy. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed that. The third act was actually probably one of my favorite parts of the film, aside from the JSA trying to rein in Black Adam. Whenever the action turns off and uh, there's some horrible, horrible acting in this movie, man, especially from everybody outside of the JSA and Black Adam. Pierce Brosnan was definitely, I think, the standout as well as Aldous Hodge as far as their characters are also given a lot more to do than Noah Centineo and uh, uh, Quintessa Swindell's characters. They're just kind of given like the very bare bones of characterization and then chucked into the meat of things. You know, uh, Noah's kind of the the the, uh, the rookie, a little bit of the comic relief. Uh, not really any of it works or lands for me, but once everybody shuts up and the action gets going, it's a lot of fun. But I really did like uh, Aldous Hodge's Hawkman. Uh, again, very one note of a character. I think uh, Pierce Brosnan did a fantastic job as Kent Nelson and I really wish we had more Dr. Fate in this than we we get. We get quite a lot, but I it just made me want more of Pierce Brosnan in this role. I really liked the uh, Dr. Fate in this. The way that Black Adam's origin story is kind of parsed out and revealed throughout the 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 film is also very drawn out, clunky and mishandled. I feel like Kondok as a as a country is also kind of overshadowed or ignored in a lot of ways, other than being the setting that they are in, this place that is just constantly trading hands between uh, inv- other invaders, taking over, conquering it on repeat since the, the early days when their hero was in power. It just needed more attention and more care and more love and maybe even some better, a better cast. Because uh, 
outside of the, the main names that we know and that I've mentioned, there's some really bad acting in this, man. And I don't like coming down on kid actors, man, but I feel like we've had some really fantastic like younger actors in recent years that I feel like at this point I can probably critique this a little bit more harshly these days, but there's this kid in here. And this harkens back to why I feel like this movie is trapped in the 2000s. Is we have this kid who is a comic book fan. He's running around. He's scrappy. He's forcing himself into all these situations. He's rolling around town on a skateboard. He's trying to get The Rock to be the stereotypical superhero, cape name, catchphrase, all that stuff, talking about his branding and all that. And he just, he's always putting himself in these awful positions to mess up everything. And the, just, the kid's just like, so any scene he talked in, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't take it seriously. Sabak is a pretty cool villain though. Again, I wish he was really fleshed out more and set up. So, like I said, some of that time given to the JSA could have been given to fleshing him out and we could just, could have just accepted the JSA's existence. Cause I think sometimes you can trust the audience to just accept the existence of a thing in this world, especially considering this is a world that we are familiar with, that we know there are these fantastical beings and entities out there in this world. It's not far fetched to just put us out there and trust us to figure things out along the way. Um, and then there's the whole like fake out ending, like before the start of the third act that really just didn't need to happen. And we could have also just smooth that transition into the third act a lot better. But like I said, through all its problems, all of its faults, um, there's still a lot in this I really did enjoy. Like the critic brain in me sees all these problems, but the fan in me is just like, I see, I'm, I'm watching Black Adam fight the JSA. And I, that, that was enough for me to at least get through the film. And then the final fight with uh, him and, uh, Sabak was a lot of fun. And then let's, I had the post credit scene spoiled for me beforehand. The fucking rock spoiled it for everybody. If you even like follow this news at all, he just straight out confirmed it before the movie came out to the public. But if you've managed to not have it spoiled, you're probably going to be in for a huge surprise at the end of the film. At the end of the day, this film is extremely flawed. It has some low lows, but it's got some pretty high highs and I enjoyed myself for the most part throughout this movie, despite some of my hangups throughout it. As a fan of DC itself, really kind of carried it through. But like I said, as a, as a critic, this movie's not very well put together uh, by any stretch of the imagination and really barely skirts by in a lot of aspects. But as a, as a fan of these characters and this medium, um, I did enjoy myself in the end more so, more than I have with some other films that I've had some problems with here recently. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. We're we'll carrying on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that on my social description box below. Follow me in each and every one of those. Before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Philly Vane, Yori Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Raven McCann, Status Alive, Jeffrey Hale, and M. Sephiroth. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.